This is Rock Talk with Mitch LaFawn. Mitch LaFawn. Welcome to this special edition of Rock Talk. And I, of course, I'm your host, Mitch LaFawn. Joining me on this episode from the band Tesla, it is the one, the only, Frank Hannon. We are talking about his new CD, From One Place to Another, Volume 1 a compilation of covers that he has put together, including Under the Milky Way, featuring Dwayne Betts, Call Me the Breeze, featuring Paul Jackson of Blackberry Smoke, and so much more. We also talk about the Phil Collin produced Tesla album that is coming up later this summer. And uh, here we go. Without further ado, I give you the one, the only, guitarist extraordinaire from Tesla. Frank Hannon. We are speaking with guitarist Frank Hannon of the band Tesla. New album coming out January 26th is from one place to another, Volume 1. Frank, always, always a great pleasure to talk to you. Right on, Mitch. Hey, it's great to be on the, on the air, man. And uh, yeah. I'm on the road right now. I, I just got off of a cruise ship uh, with the Moody Blues doing my solo project. And uh, yeah, it, it, this is a solo album. This is my album. And Tesla's got a new album coming out in June. Yeah, which I want to talk to to you about now. This this solo album is volume one. From what I understand, there's going to be a volume two and volume three, and it's sort of you paying tribute to sort of your 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 influences and your guitar heroes and and stuff, right? Well, uh, in a way, but it's really more about vocals uh, for me on this album. Um, you know, the guitar is obviously my first love and what I'm known for in Tesla. But I'm also a songwriter and a singer and a producer. And so, uh, you know, I've made some solo albums of original music that I'm proud of. But this project really started off as a way for me to develop my singing voice and kind of really do some soul searching in a way of finding my own lead vocal. And my father-in-law is Dickie Betts. And he told me a long time ago, he said, the way you learn to play guitar is you learn you know, B.B. King licks, or you learn Chuck Berry licks, or Eddie Van Halen licks. Well, that's the way you learn to sing better, is you learn a bunch of different styles of singing. And that's basically the impetus for this project. And it's turned into 30 songs. Wow, 30 songs. Um, okay, so, so talk to me about this voice, because you've done Guitars from Mars, 100 Proof Live, um, and of course, in Tesla, you've got Jeff singing everything. Uh what does this suggest that you, is it just sort of a self discovery to find your voice or is it something that you really want to develop as an instrument and start putting out more albums with, with the focus on your voice? Well, it's the common, it's, it's all of that really. And I've always sang and I've always written songs and brought songs into the table with vocals on them. That, you know, and then Jeff Keith takes them and makes them obviously much better which is great. I mean, that's how a band works is it, a, a guy will bring in a song and then the guys will change it up and stuff. But, uh, on my album, Gypsy Highways, the solo album I did, that was the first time that I really wanted to pursue a storytelling singing style, sort of like Bob Dylan or, you know, Johnny Cash, you know, like where it's not really about lead guitar, but it's about telling stories. And, uh, Gypsy Highway is my original album like that. Um, but I've always, when I, you know, my first gig, my favorite guitar players are guitar players that sing, you know, Jimi Hendrix, Rick Derringer, Peter Frampton, Joe Walsh, even Ted Nugent, like him or not, you know? So it's like guitar players that sing is, has always been my favorite type of, uh, uh, musician. So that's basically, I just want to keep pursuing that. And that's what this project's all about. Yeah, and and and, and I, I happen to like Ted Nugent. I, I mean, I, I I stay away from his politics, but then of course Derek St. Holmes uh, with him is somebody you also must quite appreciate because he he's just wonderful. Um, he's a great singer and a great guitar player. Yeah, I mean, everybody looks back and thinks, "Oh, Stranglehold" is such a great Ted Nugent song, but Derek is singing it. People seem to forget that. Um, talk to me though about your and in- then, yeah, go ahead. I'm. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, and another one of my all-time favorites who happens to be my father-in-law is Dickie Beck and the Almond Brothers. I mean, yeah. they're some of their greatest songs. Blue Sky, Ramblin' Man, Southbound, were all sung by Dickie Beck. Talk to me about your influences, because, you know, Tesla is, uh, you go back to Mechanical Residence, which is 
probably my favorite debut album ever. I mean, that song, that album from top to bottom, there, there is not a weak spot on it. But Modern Day Cowboy and, and Rock Me to the Top, these are, you know, rock songs, at the time even called metal songs. And then you look at, at this album and, and Real to Real, and you guys are covering the James Gang and the Guess Who and Robin Trowers and Derek and the Dominoes, the, these very un uh, metal bands. Uh, talk to me about your influences and then how you sort of translated it into what you do with Tesla. Well, you know, you mentioned Modern Day Cowboy, uh, Tesla's first single. Uh, if you listen, there's acoustic guitar woven throughout it and in and, and the verses and the dynamics. And uh, we've always loved bands that were dynamic and would, would add different uh, colors to it, um, even within the same song. So, you know, it, it's kind of funny, man. Spinal Tap is such a great movie, but because, you know, it's so true. What they say, changing our style is our style. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we're not one dimensional. Um, and I, I've always been the guilty culprit of that with Tesla, because I've always been the guy who brought in piano solos or, or acoustic guitar so- intros. If you listen to Tesla's first album, you know, there's a, there's a jazz piano solo and there's a song called Changes, which is very Fantastic. different. And, and Steve Thompson, the uh, producer of that album, is a friend of mine. Uh, he yeah. Did, he did such a bang up job. I mean, just, but, but go on. Uh, yeah, there, there are obviously other influences in that album. Um, let me just get over here to Red Hawk Records. So redhawkrecords.com, which is your full service recording and production studio. Talk to me about that studio, because it says here, you know, uh, share Frank's vast experience in studio recording, video production, digital marketing, radio promotion. So, you know, I'm in a band, let's say, and I come to you at Red Hawk Record Studios and stuff. What do, or Red Hawk Productions, what do I get? What What is, what do you offer? Well, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. And, and all I can offer is just, some advice from the experiences I've had in this business. And, you know, I, I have a studio. I used to have more of an open door policy, but now I'm very selective. I've really realized how valuable time is. And I really don't have, uh, I don't really offer producing other artists much anymore, uh, except for like once in a while, there'll be a, a, a an artist that I'll run by, run into and, you know, hopefully I can help, but you know, in today's world, everyone can do it yourself. I mean, no one needs a label. You don't need anything except your own drive and motivation. And, uh, you know, that, that's really it. I mean, I, I, I just offer some advice and say, Hey man, learn how to record yourself, learn how to sing and put your heart into it. A hundred percent. You know, Lucas Nelson had a, a, a quote, recently that I thought was great in one of his interviews. He said, if you're a musician, you have to look at this the same way you would as if you were an athlete. You've got to train, you've got to devote your life to it, and you've got to go for it, or you're not going to succeed. If you only do it halfway, you're only going to go not even halfway. So if you want to make records and record, you got to give it 100%. Right. Um, speaking of 100%, uh, Phil Collin of Def Leppard, your relationship with the band goes back many, many years. I first saw Tesla with Def Leppard on the Hysteria tour. And of course, this past year, I saw you with Poison again in Def Leppard. Talk to me about the relationship with that band. What what has Def Leppard meant to Tesla? And why have you guys combined for so many tours over the years and, and successful tours and, you know, just amazing tours. It's, it's, it's such a perfect package, those two bands. What is it about Tesla? I mean, about Def Leppard? Well, you know, we have this camaraderie with Def Leppard that started in Amsterdam uh, back in 1986. We were over there playing in a club called the Paradiso. And Rick Allen, Steve Clark, and Phil Collin came to the club and hung out with us. And jammed with us on stage and we played some ACDC tunes and just, we just had a connection immediately became friends. And then, uh, our management, uh, also managed them said, Hey, which band do you want to take on the hysteria tour? 
And those guys said, well, we love Tesla. So they have always been like big brothers to us and just love us. And I think it's because they come from Sheffield, England, which is a small blue collar town. The same as what we do with Sacramento. It's a small town and we have the same work ethic. And they're like totally hardworking guys that have been through a lot. And we are too, you know, it's not all about just glam and glitz and being a, you know, being a drama queen There's, you know, it's, it's more about just hard working hard. And I think we relate to that. And that's why Phil has taken an interest in us and helping us work really hard on, uh, you know, keeping our career alive. And he's done a great job with that. He, he really has. Um, so, so talk to me then about having him as a producer, because Simplicity came out in 2014. Tom Zutat, yourselves, produced the album. Why bring in an outside producer? Why not just do it in-house again? Well, because why just keep repeating ourselves? You know, we wanted to try something different. And Phil had a great amount of energy and compassion for the band. And when he showed us that he had that for us, we wanted to give it a shot. And it's the first time that we've ever made a record where we've let someone come in and co-write the songs and really teach us new things, um, you know, because we're pretty hard-headed. So to have a guy with his experience who's worked with Mutt Lang and who has produced these these really killer albums, we decided, well, let's give it a shot and see how it comes out, and it's something new that we're going to learn. And so it was great. Yeah, it really was. And, and but of course, you know, working with Mutt Lang, let's not forget that you guys worked with uh, Barbiero and Thompson, which which were sort of uh, a duo to be reckoned with back in the uh, late '80s and early '90s. Um, oh yeah, Steve Thompson and Michael Barbiero were great, and they had more of an organic approach. You know, like they recorded us live in the room, and and it was a different approach. Mutt Lang's approach is more of breaking it down and refining it and turning it into a different type of sculpture. And, and, and so it's something different for us, but we've been very blessed. I mean, even before we made our first album, we, we had worked with Max Norman. We had worked with a bunch of different producers that came and basically auditioned us, you know? So again, it's all about learning and trying new things. It really is. Um, Talk to me a little bit about uh, One Place to Another, Volume 1, uh, and then Volume 2. Is this something that you plan on taking on the road and touring behind it and bringing these songs to fans? Oh, yeah. I'm doing some very select uh, solo dates. I just did the Moody Blues Cruise. Um, I'm going to be doing my, my solo set on the Monsters of Rock Cruise that Tesla's headlining. Uh, I'm going to be in Cleveland and Detroit uh, February 17th and 18th. Uh, I just got word I'm going to do March 1st in Las Vegas, March 2nd in Phoenix, March 3rd in Tucson, and then uh, March 23rd or 24th, I'm going to be in San Francisco at the Fillmore uh, as a solo artist. And I'll be doing uh, songs. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the album, um, the diversity of uh, yeah. the songs. Like Blue Sky is, is, is the current single, and I think the next single I'm going to put out will be Under the Milky Way, which is a very obscure song that people might remember if they've heard it, but not know, know who did it, you know? Well, by yeah, a band by, called The Church. By The Church, yeah. Talk to me about, about the songs, because you, you didn't go for sort of the the easy picks. You didn't, you know, you didn't go for Rock and Roll All Night by Kiss, You've Got to Hear You Knockin', Joy to the World, Four Letter. Talk to me about the selections and uh, You're My Best Friend, of course. Um, choosing those songs and, and putting them together and, and adding your own spin to them? Well, um, I had mentioned earlier that the, the premise of this album was singing lead vocal. And so I would challenge myself to pick some songs that I love, but maybe didn't think I could sing. Like I, I didn't, for the life of me, think I would be able to sing a Queen song. Of course, you know, Freddie Mercury's the greatest. But I, I started singing that song, You're My Best Friend, and it just felt so natural to me. And, and when I pulled it off, I mean, I literally recorded it in my hotel room on a little Tascam multi-track with a built-in microphone on, that runs on batteries. And it came out so magical. I was like, wow, I think I might be able to really do this. And so I started just humming along the songs that that I thought were cool that I liked, like the Under the Milky Way and 
some of my new favorite bands are Blackberry Smoke, and I did Sunrise in Texas, and uh, songs that were a lot different than I would normally do. Like, you know, it would be normal for me to cover a Led Zeppelin song or a Montrose song, but because I wanted to sing, I started picking songs that were more vocal orientated and more relaxed and more vibey. Like I even challenged myself to do a seal song, kiss from a rose, which is going to be on volume two. Really? That, that's actually kind of exciting. Now we, we all know, of course, that Jeff is the singer in Tesla. Have you ever had those discussions where you said, Hey, listen, I want to sing two songs on this album, or I want to have a chance to sing a song on this album. Is, is that a discussion that comes up or is that sort of, Nope, let's, let's not even talk about this. Um, we may have talked about it before uh, in the band, but, you know, Jeff has such a great voice, and he is the voice of Tesla. And, you know, um, I, I, don't, I don't fight for that because I love Jeff's voice. I mean, the first time I ever heard Jeff sing, I thought, this guy is freaking awesome. And this was back in 1982 in the club days, you know. So I'm not interested in singing in Tesla. I want Jeff to sing for Tesla, and I'm more interested in growing and having the freedom to do my own thing, which is what I'm doing. As you move, you've had the Frank Hannon band, you've had Moon Dog, uh, Moon Dog Maine, and this. Uh, what is sort of your pl- your your plans for sort of the, a solo career? Is it just to fill in time while Tesla's not doing uh, doing stuff, or is it some at some point when Tesla says, "Okay, we're done." you want to keep going and and really establish yourself as a solo artist? Yeah, it's both of those things. Um, You know, obviously it's, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be playing my guitar and singing songs until, you know, I die. And so that'll be, you know, hopefully a long time from now. So, uh, you know, I just do it for the love of it. I like to learn. I like to, uh, to develop and grow and keep my mind active. And uh, if, someday tesla decides to take a hiatus or or call it quits um you know i want to do my own thing just like joe walsh does you know when the eagles are taking their time off when hell freezes over you know and and joe walsh goes out and he he does joe walsh and that's kind of my role model right there and of course tesla did take a little break in the 90s and, and you came back and now you've got dave in there dave rude um, talk to me about Dave and what he's added to the texture of that band. Because I think personally, other than mechanical resonance, I think Tesla has sounded better now in the last few years than just ever before. It's just such a machine, especially in the live setting. Well, thank you very much. And I have to agree with you because Dave is very solid, man. He's a straight up solid professional player guy. He's easy to get along with. He's always in a, a pretty decent mood. You know, I've never seen the guy angry. So, you know, he's he's really easy to be around. He brings a great energy into the into the band. And uh, if it wasn't for Dave Root, I don't know what would have happened with Tesla. And I'm just glad. I'm so glad that I found him. You know, it was not easy. I had to audition a bunch of guys, and then I finally found Dave. Oh. And uh, he he's been a very positive influence to the oh, band. Just really has. Uh, you. That's interesting. I never really knew that you had that much, uh, or, or that he he auditioned that much. I thought he was sort of just invited. Was there a lot of auditions for Tesla to to find the new guitars? Was was there sort of a a painstaking thirty guitar lineup that showed up, guitarist lineup that showed up? It didn't. No, the audition process didn't happen that way. It happened over a course of uh, several years of uh, rehabs and ins and outs and uh, hard times and. There was some guys that I knew locally in my hometown that were in my solo band that I was having join me for dates here and there. And they weren't lining up to me. I was searching for them, knowing that if I don't, you know, this test was going to be over with, with the hardships we were going through. So, uh, you know, I flew to L.A. and I jammed with a couple people and I was just keeping my ears open. And uh, I stumbled on to Dave Root on MySpace. Uh, the, the website, wow. my space. Remember yeah. that? Oh, I do. <laughs> and he played the guitar so perfectly, and he looked so cool. I was like, "That's the guy!" And I knew instantly he was the guy, and it was very exciting. That's great. Uh, I, I'm up here in Montreal. Back in, I guess it was April. 
I was backstage at the Tesla show and I got a chance to talk to you. And, and my next show coming up after that was Pat Travers. And you said, oh, my, I'd love to meet him and stuff. So, so just for, from the Canadian perspective, what is it about Pat Travers that 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 touched a chord with you? And what's it, what is it about Pat Travers that you really appreciate? Well, Pat Travers is is one of these guitar players who also sings. And I had mentioned earlier, I love guitar players that sing. And um, he's another one of my heroes. I'm glad you mentioned him because Pat Travers, Rick Garinger, Johnny Winter, those guys. But Pat Travers was an innovative guy with guitar effects, you know, flangers. And, and he used to mix funk in with his music. So his riffs are really funky and they're actually very hard to play. But, you know, since you and I talked about that, I, I've actually become friends with Pat Travers, and he was a special guest on one of my albums called Six String Soldiers, and he's on my solo album there. And um, I might see him here in a couple of days if I stick around Florida, and uh, I'm hoping I can get him on one of my volumes on my, from one place to another. Wow, that would be great, in fact. And, and I'm glad you mentioned Johnny Winter. I actually saw them open up for April wine back in the in back in the eighties. Um, you did mention kiss from a rose from seal. And of course the volume two and three, what is sort of the timeline? Is this sort of drop volume one in January and then we'll see volume two in September or is this 2018, 2019, 2020? How do you know? It's going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to do this every three months and I'm probably going to be done putting these out before the new Tesla record comes out. So from now until June, I'm going to be hustling and working hard and putting out these volumes. I still got to finish volume three. I'm still looking for some more special guests. Like I said, I'm hoping Pat Travers might join in. I don't know, you know. So it's uh, I'm going to be getting this all done. The first first two volumes are done, and the first one's out now. And by the way, you can get it on Pledge Music right now. Uh, you can pre-order it and get some cool bundles. PledgeMusic.com. Hope you don't mind. I plug them a little bit because they're really no, no, helping no. with this project. And in fact, um, back in 2013, I had a, a Kiss tribute that was up on Pledge Music. Talk to me about Pledge Music and and bringing that sort of fan centered approach to getting albums out there because it really is sort of a different way. Pledge Music would not have existed around 1996 or 1986. So, talk to me about going to them and what it means for you and and for the fans to to have that experience of pre-ordering yeah go ahead uh well you know i hadn't heard of pledge music very much before and then someone made me aware of them and it's so cool because you know when i was a kid it was so great to be able to go to tower records and look at the at the albums and then maybe buy a poster and get some incense and you know and, and get everything from all in one place and ever since the physical products have kind of gone away that's kind of disappeared and so now with pledge music you can get a poster, you can get a vinyl copy, you can get the download, of course, in today's technology, but you can also get all these different cool things. And uh, it's genius, man, and it's a lot of fun, and it's cool. I mean, I'm even being uh, offered to go play a concert at somebody's house, thanks to Pledge Music, you know? So that's just really a cool thing. Yeah, it really is, that that fan experience. And uh, I'll, I'll finish with this, uh, just quickly back to, to Tesla. You know, we talked about Phil Cohen and the album coming out in June. But at the same time, Tesla is a brand. You, you've done all these songs. What motivates you to, to, to come up with another collection of 12 songs? Because you could easily go to any venue, put your name up there, play all of Mechanical Resonance, and the fans would show up. So what motivates you to say, okay, we need new tesla music well each guy in the band has their own different motivations uh me i'm always motivated to keep learning and stuff like i said and keep trying new things um but again on this album i would say it was phil colin got the band as a group motivated to uh to uh try some new stuff and to learn uh some new recording techniques and new ways to write songs. And uh, so Phil Collin has motivated Tesla at this point. And, uh, but like I said, for me, I'm motivated by learning and trying new stuff. And that's what my solo albums are for. And that's why I'm doing those. Yeah, and they, and they sound great. Uh, Frank, uh, always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, man. Thanks for having me. And uh, God bless and have a good day. You're listening to Rock Talk with Mitch LaFond. Rock Talk.